The animation begins with a boy named Takeji who went on a journey alone to Monster Island. He sailed to a cave that led to the island, where the water outside the cave was calm, but inside, it was full of currents. When he arrived on the island, Takeji was surprised to find his younger brother, Kodake, there. Then, he scolded Kodake and it made him cry. As they explored the island, they came across a pile of mushrooms that they were looking for. They quickly gathered them, from the common ones to the rare ones. However, two monsters, a red ogre named Naki and a blue ogre named Gunjo, appeared before them. Shortly after, they tried to run away, but the monsters chased them quickly due to their incredible strength and destroying their boat. Because of that Takeji drowned. At that time, Naki and Gunjo were pleased that they had driven the human away. However, when Naki kicked a piece of wood, he saw Kodake, who was sad because he was now separated from his older brother. Meanwhile, in another place, Kodake's mother was looking worried, and the residents came to her to tell her that Takeji had broken a village taboo by going to Moster Island with his younger brother. When Takeji returned home, he apologized to his mother for going to the Monster Island with his brother. He did this because he wanted to find mushrooms to pay for his mother's treatment. When his mother found out that Kodake was still on the Monster Island, she immediately ran to save him. However, the residents stopped her because the island was very dangerous. After that, the village elder arrived and told them that the monsters were angry and would curse his son for coming to their island. The elder then told the residents about the legends of the past, which were written on the map. It turned out that their ancestors had chased away the monsters in the past. He said that there was only one way to appease the monsters, and that was through a handling ceremony. Meanwhile, on Monster Island, the monsters were worried because their population was far less than that of humans, especially after the war with humans ended 200 years ago. The situation was so tense that even Naki farted carelessly while the monster elder was telling them that the humans had destroyed the monsters in the fantasy forest, and they had no other place to go. Hearing that, Naki quickly decided to kill Kodake. However, the other monsters stopped him. Then, the old monster advised Naki to take care of Kodake so they could use him as a hostage when the humans come to attack their island, but he refused and left them. Later, the monsters gathered in the middle of the forest to determine who would take care of Kodake. Then, they appointed Gunjo to take care of Kodake. But this decision caused a fight between Gunjo and Naki because Gunjo had brought Kodake to their house. After negotiating, Gunjo and Naki made a deal. Naki agreed to take care of Kodake in exchange for 40% of the mushrooms they would harvest later from the hill. However, at night, while Naki was cooking, Kodake scolded him and set his butt on fire until it burned. On the other hand, in a different location, some people were performing a ritual that involved sacrificing a fish to calm their spirits. However, their peace was disturbed by the loud and scary noises that sounded like monsters. It was actually Naki who was screaming in agony, but the people were so frightened that they couldn't tell the difference. When Gunjo heard Naki's painful screams, he was shocked. Then, he scolded Naki for his behavior and tried to stop him from throwing Kodake away. Unfortunately, Kodake bit Naki, causing him even more pain. Soon after, Gunjo quickly ran after Kodake and managed to catch him. He then advised Naki to be patient with young children. However, Gunjo was unaware that Kodake had burned his back, making him feel hot and uncomfortable. In his anger, he ran towards Kodake to catch him. But instead, Kodake stumbled and cried loudly, causing their house to shake. At that time, Naki couldn't tolerate the sound of Kodake's crying, so he screamed as well, but that only made Kodake laugh. After several attempts, Naki was exhausted and asked Gunjo to take turns watching over Kodake. Shortly after, Gunjo demonstrated his power before Kodake and then disappeared from his sight. However, this made Kodake feel sad once again. Eventually, Gunjo resolved to put an end to their dispute by eating a mushroom that could change its shape. This action sparked Kodake's eagerness to keep up with Gunjo's level. Soon after, while Kodake slept, Naki recollected his past where he lost his mother due to the war, and Gunjo went through a similar experience when he got separated from his mother. These incidents brought them closer and they became good friends. On the following day, Naki built a boat with the intention of throwing Kodake into the ocean while he was still asleep. However, Kodake managed to trail him without being noticed. At the same time, when Gunjo was examining his friend's new residence, Kodake approached him and saw that Naki had chopped a hole in the house to create his boat. After some time, Naki was surprised to discover that Kodake had returned to his house. So, he kept discarding him many times, but Kodake managed to come back every time, much to his amazement. Soon after, Gunjo had a funny idea of smearing charcoal on Kodake's face, which made Naki burst into laughter. Then, Gunjo revealed to Naki that Kodake actually liked him. But this enraged Naki, who flung Kodake back into the ocean. Later on, a strong wind swept over the area, causing Gunjo and Naki to worry about Kodake's safety. They rushed to his aid and fought off the monsters that were attempting to harm him. 
However, Gunjo unknowingly struck his own friend in the process, leading to the destruction of the newly built house. Shortly after, Naki decided to take Kodake home, where they cooked and ate together. Unfortunately, Gunjo and Naki got into an argument over the angel's hood mushroom, which resulted in the mushroom falling and being consumed by Kodake. As a consequence, Kodake lost consciousness due to the mushroom's effects. The next day, they climbed a hill in search of the angel's cap mushroom. But instead, Kodake consumed another type of mushroom that sent him flying. Fortunately, Naki was there to help him. To their surprise, Kodake had already found the angel's hood mushroom, and Naki tried to claim it for himself. Unexpectedly, Kodake gave the mushroom away for free, which made Naki very happy. Meanwhile, during dinner, Kodake suddenly developed a fever and called out for his mother. At that time, Gunjo overheard this and pointed out that there were other monsters like them far to the south. Then, Naki scolded him for not following up on this, as the monster was likely Gunjo, Kei's mother. The next morning, Kodake's fever had gone down, and they had a pleasant breakfast together. They went fishing and played together, which made Naki laugh. Then, he took Kodake up the hill to show him the beautiful scenery. Meanwhile, the monsters secretly snuck into the human village and asked the gatekeeper why the security was so tight. The guard informed them that one of the citizens had been eaten alive by monsters. Shortly after, one of the monsters saw a spear pointed at him, causing him to become scared and leave his friends. Over time, the monsters that used to appear tall became shorter as they fled one by one. The panicked guard shouted to inform the residents, who gathered to hunt the fleeing monsters. After that, Gunjo gave Naki a signal to decide whether they should continue walking or stop. But as Naki was about to depart from Kodake, he started weeping and calling out Naki's name, which made Naki feel sad because they had to part ways. To make Kodake happy, Naki created fireworks which not only brought joy to Kodake but also helped him reunite with his mother. However, even after seeing his mother, Kodake kept calling out Naki's name, causing him to feel sorrowful, but they had to accept the fact that they couldn't stay together forever. The next day, the elders punished Gunjo and Naki for violating the rules by sneaking into the human island. Later that afternoon, Naki was still feeling low and couldn't stop thinking about Kodake, who they were separated from. On the other hand, when Kodake's mother finally appeared, she caught Kodake in the act of drawing a picture of Naki on the ground. Sadly, the village elders promptly erased it. Meanwhile, Naki was on top of a hill, searching for the angel's cap mushroom for Kodake. However, Gunjo cautioned him against approaching Kodake. This made Naki furious, and he accused him of being a timid monster who wouldn't even dare to see his mother. In response, Gunjo explained that he couldn't leave Naki alone because all the other monsters on the island despised him. Soon after, the argument between the two escalated into a physical fight. Fortunately, Gunjo quickly regained his composure while Naki stormed off. Then, Naki eventually decided to meet Kodake to give him the angel's hood mushroom. Meanwhile, the elders invited samurai to protect the villagers from the monsters that threatened them. With his strength, the samurai impressed everyone with his incredible strength as he chopped down trees, making his hair disheveled. Meanwhile, Naki reached the human island and immediately spotted Kodake standing in front of his house. Unbeknownst to him, the villagers were watching him from above and caught him. Then, Naki tried to negotiate calmly, but it was no use because the samurai kept attacking him with arrows, causing him to suffer severe injuries to his hands and feet. Despite his injuries, Naki tried to escape using his remaining strength, but he couldn't run very far. Fortunately, Gunjo arrived just in time to rescue him. Then, they went to a cave to tend to Naki's wounds, and Gunjo tried to comfort him. Shortly after, when Naki decided to meet Kodake, Gunjo thought of him and chose to go see the sun. When Naki emerged from the cave, Gunjo said that he couldn't forgive humans anymore. He then consumed the transformation mushroom, which drove him insane, and he headed to the human village to seek revenge. Shortly after, as Gunjo arrived at the human village, his anger made him destroy everything in his path. The villagers and the samurai ran in fear towards the sacred ceremony to protect themselves. However, Naki came to stop Gunjo and try to bring him back to his senses. Sadly, Gunjo was blinded by his rage and attacked Naki who was his closest friend. Then, Kodake tried to calm Gunjo down, but it was no use because Gunjo's hatred towards humans was too strong. Fortunately, Naki was able to protect Kodake from Gunjo's attacks. At that time, Naki did not give up and continued to revive Gunjo even though he was repeatedly attacked. During the battle, Naki was stabbed and fell into a ravine. But he still managed to stand up and protect the villagers from Gunjo's rampage. Finally, the effect of the transformation mushroom wore off, and Gunjo returned to his original self. Then, Naki hit him and told him to go back to the monster island. After that, Kodake came to Naki's side, but he had already fallen unconscious from his injuries. Shortly after, Naki was looked after by his mother Kodake on the monster island. When he woke up, the village kids came to visit him and invited him to play. Eventually, he took a boat back to his island. 
When Naki arrived, he received a letter from his friend Gunjo, which was intended for someone else. The letter revealed that Gunjo had decided to leave Naki and find his mother in the south. It also stated that he had given up on being friends with humans. Hearing that, Naki was devastated and wanted to catch up with Gunjo. However, a stop symbol prevented him from doing so. There, Naki was heartbroken and cried loudly because he had to part ways with his best friend. Meanwhile, Guncho, who had attacked humans to help them accept the battery, left the monster island with a heavy heart. He cried and hugged Kodake before leaving. The animation ends with this scene. The moral lesson of this animation is if you want to make friends with monsters, just burn their butts and bite them, and they will eventually become your friends.